Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. Today's video is my December book haul. Okay, so probably unsurprisingly, especially given the fact that it's like late December right now, I have kind of a lot of books to share with you. I have some gifts that were sent to me. I have books that I have for videos. I have some Black Friday shopping. I have some pre-orders. I have some stuff from publishers. I've got kind of a variety here. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm really excited. I've got some amazing books and quite a number of these I have already read, which is exciting. I'm doing a good job of getting this stuff. Okay, so let's start with books that I have because of secret vlogs that should now be live. One is a book that I purchased in November but couldn't show you at the time because I was going to be doing this reading vlog and that book is Malice by John Gwynn. So I got this for a booktube secret Santa project which I will link above that vlog if you haven't seen it. It's a spoiler free weekend, wintry weekend reading vlog of this. I ended up really liking it and in the course of making that video went with my kids to Barnes and Noble and picked up book two. <laughs> so I now also have Valor by John Gwynn. Obviously I did quite enjoy this. I know it's not for everybody but if you like classic epic fantasy this is really good. It's a bit of a slow burn but I ultimately really enjoyed it. I liked the world. I really loved some of the characters and I'm excited to see where the series is going to go next. I am planning to put this video up after my collab video with Ashley from Bookish Realm goes live where we did a TBR swap and picked each other's TBRs. So I have four books from that video that I'm hauling here. These are the books that Ashley sent me to read. As I'm filming this I currently have one of the four left to read. I'm going to be reading that in the next couple of days but by the time this goes up all of these will be read and you can check out that video linked up above if you want to hear my thoughts on them. Those books are The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye, Heroine by Mindy McGinnis, Cherishing the Goddess by Lucy Eden, and lastly the one that I am about to read as I'm filming this, the Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. So those four books were sent to me from Ashley. I sent her four books to read. Um, check out her video and mine. I'll link her video up above as well. Uh, that was a super fun collaboration. The next category of books is three books that I purchased through Romancing the Runoff. It was an auction where people donated books and services. I donated manuscript critiques to raise funds for organizations supporting getting out the vote in Georgia for that runoff election and I ended up purchasing three books through that. All of the proceeds went to charity and I get to add three books to my library that I'm very happy to have. So here are the books from that. First up is Bring on the Blessings by Beverly Jenkins. I should mention all of these are signed by the authors so they were all donated by the authors which is really fun. So thanks for supporting Democracy from Beverly Jenkins. It's even like super decorated and adorable. I love Beverly Jenkins historicals and I've never read any of her contemporaries. This is the first book in her contemporary series and I've been wanting to pick it up at some point so this seemed like a great opportunity. Also you all know I'm a Courtney Milan fangirl and Courtney Milan was one of the creators of Romancing the Runoff so of course she had a bunch of copies of The Duke Who Didn't which is her latest book in start of a new series. It's a historical romance. I hear good things about it and I have loved everything I've read from her so Dear Bethany, thank you for supporting Democracy from Courtney Milan. So you're, see you're, you're seeing a trend here, which I love. And then the last one that I picked up from that looks super fun. This is A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem by Amanda Collins. I love the cover. It's super adorable. This looks like a really fun historical romance and she signed it, get up to some mischief. So that's cool. This one follows a lady newspaper columnist and an inspector detective sort of guy so um, I think this will be really fun. So there you go those are the three signed books that I picked up through Romancing the Runoff. Um, I will be adding them to my romance TBR shelf. I am very pleased to have all three of them. Next up let's talk about books that were sent to me by authors and publishers. Not too many this month which isn't surprising. December is a bit of a slower month for this kind of stuff but I do have four books to share. 
First up from Tor is a book that is going on my January TBR. This is Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. I believe this is coming out in February. Yeah, February. And I think this also might be a debut. It's a sci-fi romance that they're pitching as ancillary justice meets red, white, and royal blue. So it's got a queer love story plus political machinations in space. Sounds like it's going to be a really good time. Thank you to Tor for sending a copy. I will be reviewing this one. Then I have two books that were sent to me by the Harlequin publicity team for promotion on Instagram. First up is One Last Chance by Therese Bahari. Last month they sent me the other two books in this series and this is I think the final one. The whole series looks really great. They're contemporary romances set in South Africa, which is cool because it's a little different. I think the author is also from South Africa. This one is a second chance romance uh, between a couple who were best friends, got married, got divorced, and now they run into each other again and maybe find love again. And then the other book from Harlequin is Teddy Spencer Isn't Looking for Love by Kim Fielding. This is another one of their Karina Doors line, which puts queer characters at the center of typical romance tropes. This is a rivals to lovers and workplace romance between a designer and an engineer. Um, so kind of opposites attract. It looks like it's probably pretty fun. And then the final book that was sent to me this month is a book that is going on my February TBR. I may read it in January if I get ambitious, but officially this is going on my February TBR. This is Queen of Empire by H.R. Moore. It is an indie published fantasy romance that she's recommending for fans of Jennifer L. Armentrout and Sarah J. Mass. It looked really cool. Um, she's apparently redone and re-releasing this series. I've never read them, but this is the first book and then there will be more to come. So keep an eye out. I will be reviewing this one in the next couple months. The next category of books here is my pre-orders and in December there were five of them. First up, nobody should be surprised. We have How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. I love Alyssa Cole. She is one of my top favorite romance authors and this is the first book in a new spin-off series from Reluctant Royals following a couple of side characters. I've not yet read this. I really want to read it. I'm gonna try to make time for this very very soon but looking forward to it. I also pre-ordered The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. I have really really loved this series, the Poppy War series. I don't know if I've talked about the fact that I bought this anywhere else actually but uh, I do have The Burning God. I am on a wait list for the audio from my library to like force me to read it. I may end up deciding to just like read myself once I get the audio, but there's something about having that limited library hold that like pushes me to get to books on my TBR. Does like anybody else do this but me? I know this one is going to rip my heart out, but it's just such an incredible, if gritty and intense, dark adult military fantasy series based on real world history. So braced and ready for finishing the story. Then I pre-ordered an Owl Crate exclusive, not because I'm a huge fan of the series, but like I can't resist <laughs> illustrated novellas and short story collections. And this is a really pretty book, you guys. This is How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. I have actually only read the first book in the series. I do intend to finish it at some point, and I did like the first one. Um, but this book just looked stunning. It is a novella that is illustrated and everything about this is beautiful. Like the artwork, share. I'll show you all the things. It's got really pretty end papers. I mean, the naked book is gorgeous. And then an artist that I really like a lot did um, this stunning art. Um, I think her I think her name on Instagram is Bloody Damn It, and she did this gorgeous art for Under the Dust Jacket. And then if that wasn't enough, the book itself is illustrated. It's signed and is illustrated, you guys. Like, it's so pretty. Uh, so yeah, I am very happy to have this. I love pretty books like this. I'm kind of a sucker for them. So that was one that I had pre-ordered. I also had pre-ordered A Sky Beyond the Storm by Sleppa Tahir. This is the final book in this series. Another one that I'm like bracing for because I know it's gonna like break my heart. This is part of why I've been putting it off. I'm like, okay, I really want to read it, but maybe I'll wait till January <laughs> instead of December. Wait till after the holidays. Uh, but yeah, this is Ember in the Ashes is the first book. I've really been loving the series. It's like a very intense 
YA fantasy, epic YA fantasy story, and I am excited to see what happens and who dies. I'm sure somebody's gonna die. And then lastly is a pre-order that I mentioned a couple of book hauls ago because I pre-ordered it pretty early. This was a splurge for sure, but I paid for this like two and a half months ago. <laughs> it finally arrived. Um, if you guys are not familiar with Subterranean Press, they do these really beautiful limited editions of books and sometimes they print books that you can't get physically anywhere else and this is an example of that. The book that I bought from them is a novella from an author that I really love that is not available physically anywhere else. I think they did release an audiobook copy and so you can listen to it but I have a physical copy. This is Princess Floralinda and the Forty Flight Tower by Tamsin Muir, the author of Gideon the Ninth, which I loved a whole lot. And the premise of this sounded great. It's such a pretty book. And they just make these, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's like shimmery gold end papers. And it's limited edition, so 1,500 copies were printed, and that's all there will be. The premise of this also sounded right up my alley. It's kind of a retelling of Rapunzel with a princess who's stuck at the top of a tower and none of the princes can make it up to free her and I think it ends up being a sapphic romance where a girl is able to free her or something. So uh, this seems like it's gonna be great and it's beautiful, definitely a special edition that I will be keeping on my shelves. Next, I wanted to share some of the gifts that I've received from mostly friends. There's one who I'm not sure, I'm not sure who it came from, but mostly this is from good friends of mine on booktube who've sent me some cool stuff for the holidays. And so I wanted to share, first up, is this. My lovely friend Liana at Liana's Library sent me the super cute mug that says Respect Kissing Books. I love it. It's great. Thank you, Liana. All of the channels I'm mentioning will be linked in the video description down below if you guys want to go check them out. Um, then my dear friend Mara from Books Like Whoa sent me a really cool package that I had opened on Instagram from The Ripped Bodice, which is a romance-only bookstore that does these gift packages, and she sent me the trope trio. So the trope is the only one bed trope, and so everything is like positioned around that trope. First up, there's this super cute little notebook. It says, various extremely plausible scenarios for why we might be forced to share a bed. It's got this nice like wood cover um, and then it's just like a cute little, cute little notepad. It also came with There's Only One Bed Trope Tea, a lovely package of Earl Grey. And now that I'm doing this book haul, I'm gonna go put this where I actually make tea so I can drink it because I can smell the bergamot and uh, I love Earl Grey tea, so this was a great selection. And then before I show you the book, I'll show you the packaging that it came in. It had a blind date with a book and it says, um, well, first of all, it has like Wonder Woman wrapping paper. I don't know where they found this, but it's amazing. Crushing gamers take a road trip to a competition. Bet there is no chance the motel has only one bed. <laughs> And so the book for this is one that I hadn't heard of, but it looks right up my alley. Conventionally Yours by Annabeth Albert. It looks super cute. It says two infamous rivals, one epic road trip, some uncomfortably tight quarters, and a journey neither will ever forget. So they go to a convention for a gaming tournament, and yeah, this just looks like it'll be super fun. It also came with some swag, so this cute little lanyard. Uh, conventionally yours, Odyssey Con, and like very, very cute. So thank you so much, Mara. I love it. Then one of my other very dear booktube friends, Amanda from The Naughty Librarian, sent me a copy of From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I am super, super excited she sent this to me. Um, I'd actually really been wanting to read this. It's a fantasy romance. It won the Goodreads Choice Awards in romance. I've heard it maybe should have been more of a fantasy, but I hear good things about it. I like other stuff I've read from her. And apparently, I think in February, the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club that Liana and Amanda do is going to be reading this. And so I just might be 
a guest on the live show for that. I'm looking forward to it and it's a good reason to like read it soon. So thank you so much to Amanda. I am very excited to have this and read it. Then I got a package from my friend Isabella from the Feminist Bookworm over on Instagram. She is a bookseller and very kindly sent me a package of three advanced copies of books that are coming out next year that look really cool. So thank you Isabella. First up I have Amelia Unabridged by Ashley Schumacher. This looks really interesting. It's going on sale in February and hadn't really been on my radar, but the premise is super fascinating. So it's about two girls who are best friends and they're obsessed with fantasy books from this author and then one of them dies after they have a fight or something. Um, yeah, so one of them gets the chance to meet the author, they have a big fight, one of them dies and then in grief they go trying to the other one tries to find the author. So it's got like a magical realism elements to it. It's a really interesting premise. So interested to check that one out. Then an April release that I was not aware of, but it sounds very interesting is Victory is Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders. I think she's only written adult sci-fi previously, but now she's writing a YA sci-fi and it sounds really interesting. It says the universe is calling and time is running out. Tina has always known her destiny is outside the norm, and that was even before her mom revealed the truth behind Tina's birth, that Tina is a human clone of the most brilliant alien commander in all the galaxies, but she's tired of waiting for her life to begin. And then it does, and maybe Tina should have been more prepared. At least she has a crew around her she can trust, and her best friend at her side. Now they just have to save the world." Um, so yeah, that sounds super intriguing. I've not read anything from Charlie Jane Anders, so that should be cool to check out. And then lastly, there's a May release. This is The Coming Storm by Regina M. Hansen. Another one I was unaware of, but the cover is really, really beautiful. And it's a YA fantasy set on Prince Edward Island with like shapeshifters and maybe fairy magic of some sort. So that looks really interesting. So thank you so much to Isabella. That was really sweet of you. She sent me those. I'm looking forward to giving them all a try. Final gift. I actually don't know who this is from. I do know that this was on my wish list and it's a book that I loved and have been wanting to have a physical copy of. So if you sent this to me, let me know in the comments down below because like I don't know who sent it, but I'm really happy to have it. This is A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. One of my favorites from Tessa Dare, if you like nerdy romances, this is a really, really great one. Um, I just thought this was super fun and I'm really happy to be able to actually have a physical copy when I mention it now and not just like put up a picture and maybe reread it because I really loved this one. Okay, the next category is my Black Friday shopping. <laughs> Um, so I did a little bit of book shopping around Black Friday with Barnes and Noble and deals various places and I picked up some books so let's get into those. Online there were a couple of books I'd been wanting that went on sale. I got the Penguin Clothbound Classics Edition of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, adding this to my collection. I'm slowly getting more and more of these. I really like at Wuthering Heights and it's one that I had wanted to have a copy of. And then I also got, oh and I guess this was a pre-order wasn't it? Oh, so at this point in the clip, for some reason, the audio cut out. It does come back in the next clip. But yeah, I forgot Sister Outsider was a pre-order and I am really excited to read it. It's on my list of classics I want to read in 2021. So hopefully I can get to it pretty soon. This is part of the Penguin Vitae collection of really pretty editions of American classics that I'm probably going to start collecting. So there you go. Then... I don't know what book I'm telling you about right now. Let's see what it is. This is really fun and out of sync. I hope this is not super terrible. I have a lot to say about this. Well, shoot. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Where's the book? Where is the book? What am I saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> So um, this is the first three books in the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov. I've read it before. I love it. This is a beautiful edition from Barnes & Noble that I have my eye on. And uh, the reason I got it is it was buy one get one half off for classics. And I got another classic uh, of this set for family for Christmas and got this for myself. So yeah, they're great. And then I got a couple other buy one get one half off books, which I think is what I'm about to talk about. 
First, because of Mara, who reads a lot of Agatha Christie, I want to read more. This is The Last Seance, a collection of short stories by Agatha Christie that are creepy. They look very interesting. I feel like I'll probably enjoy them. So I got that. And then the other book that I got for half off with that deal was Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I have read the graphic novel, but I've never read the physical book. At some point, maybe I'd give it to my older kid, although it might still be too scary for him, but I kind of wanted to have a copy on my shelves and it was on sale. So I picked that up for not a whole lot on Black Friday. That, that's how they get you guys. Then, of course, we have maybe, like, the most shameful thing <laughs> in this haul. This was something where, so Barnes & Noble does these things for Black Friday where they'll have special signed editions of books. And I went in and saw them and I saw this book and I was like, I know I haven't read any of the other books in this series, but I want to. Is it book four or five? I think yes. It is, but I'm still gonna get it. Uh, this is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. I'm going to now probably show you what a beautiful book it is because it is really stunning. It's got like art inside and I do want to read the series or at least try them and I figure, you know, even if I hate the first book, somebody's gonna be excited to have a signed first edition copy of this. So, you know, it's fine. So let's look at the book. It's very pretty. It's got gorgeous art on all of the the flaps inside. Um, I think there's a map on the dust jacket. It's signed. It's a very, very pretty, nice edition that was kind of an impulse buy. But this is part of why, I mean, it was going to be on there anyway, but this is, this is part of why. <laughs> if you saw my goals video, um, I am putting the first book in the series, The Way of Kings, on my list of goals of things I want to read. So there you go. Beautiful book. Did I need it? Maybe not, but there it is. I got it anyway. Okay, let's talk about the last few books that I have acquired over the past month, and then finally my book of the month box. I know it's, it's as usual, kind of a lot of books, um, but I, I mean, I, I'm reading a lot of them. So first up, I told you in my last book haul that these were coming and they arrived used copies of two of my other favorite books in the Side Changeling series in the UK paperback covers. I'm collecting some of my favorites and I found a couple of cheap used copies on eBay. We have Branded by Fire and Kiss of Snow by Nalini Singh. Um, I now have four of these books in this edition and will probably continue eventually adding, so those arrived. Sometimes shipping on eBay stuff can take a while. Also have a book that I bought because of Alan at the Library of Alexandria. Alan Zandria, it's really hard to say his channel name, but he is one of my new favorite people and booktubers. I've met him through the World Hoppers group and he's just hilarious and also very nice. And he did this really interesting video talking about Discworld by Terry Pratchett and his love for it, where to start with it, why he thinks people should read it. And I've got to tell you, for all the people who've told me over the years that I should try Discworld books, he is the first person to convince me <laughs> that maybe I should actually try Discworld books. Um, and so on his recommendation, I picked up one of the Discworld books that he thought was a good place to start with. I'm excited to give it a try. I will say Maybe this is petty, but part of why I haven't picked them up is I hate the covers. I really don't like the original covers. However, I found that there are these beautiful hardcover editions of them with really pretty covers that are kind of expensive, but they're pretty, so I bought one. Um, I got Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. It's the first in the Guards series, and based on everything he said in the video, this sounded like a good place to start and something I would enjoy. And look, it's such a pretty cover. Here's a picture of the other cover. Not so pretty. None of them are. Like, I kind of hate the covers. I don't know what they did, but this is beautiful. And I, at some point next year, plan to start the series, try a Discworld book, and see how I get on with it. Another purchase, because I saw it on sale, and after hearing people talk about it, I had had my eye on it. And actually, as I'm filming this, I'm currently in the middle of reading this book. It is Lakewood by Megan Giddings. It's super interesting. It's horror. It follows a black woman in the South who agrees to join this kind of weird experiment, like experimental project, um, 
because she needs money to help take care of her mom and they put her through all this very strange stuff and it's getting weirder and creepier and part of what this is doing is addressing the trauma and horror of black people often being subjected to medical experimentation against their will or against their knowledge things like the Tuskegee experiment for example and that's the, the sort of thing that this is pulling from and it is definitely chilling it's not you know slasher horror or traditional horror but it's really really good and so I'm happy that I purchased a copy um I'm about a third of the way into it as I'm filming this probably gonna finish it up pretty soon then another one I guess I could blame on Mara from books like whoa because she talked about how this is one of the best nonfiction books that she's read this year. I picked up a copy of Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. You know, I am very specific in the types of nonfiction I pick up, and this does sound like it's going to be up my alley, and it sounds really interesting. It's thinking about race and racism in America as a caste system, like using that as a lens, and apparently it's very, very good. So I decided to grab a copy of that and hope to read it fairly soon as probably one of my nonfiction picks for 2021. And then lastly, before we get to my book of the month books, I had a couple of rewards coupons from Barnes and Noble. They have this thing if you're part of the kids club program where if you buy a bunch of kids stuff, you'll periodically get these $5 certificates. Well, I had $10 worth of credits. <laughs> That you can put towards anything in the children's section. So I decided to use that to get a book that I've been wanting to get. Um, I, this paid for the majority of it. It's School for Good and Evil, One True King by Soman Chinani. This is the final book in the entire series, this, the final book in the second trilogy. I've read all of the other books, I've not read this one yet, and now I'm on the waitlist for my library so I can go ahead and finish up the series. But I just, I love this series a whole lot. I have a lot of love for it knew I wanted to own, own it, finish up my collection, so I purchased that. All right, with that said, the final thing I have to share with you in this video is the books that I got from Book of the Month Club this month. And, you know, normally I would be like, oh, look at the really pretty box that they sent me. But this month, my four-year-old decided, ooh, this looks interesting, let me try to open it. So, yay. <laughs> mom life. Um, if you are not familiar with Book of the Month Club, they are a monthly book subscription service that's $15 a month including shipping for a new release or sometimes pre-release hardcover. You can also add on up to two add-ons a month for $10 each this month. I did that. I have two add-ons, uh, both of which I've read. So that is exciting. They always have five selections you can choose from, from a variety of genres, and if you don't like any of them, you can skip the month, which I do occasionally, and I love that as a feature. If you guys are interested in trying it out, I do have a link down below where I get a credit for a free book if you use my link. No pressure, but, but, uh, if you couldn't tell from the little preview on the torn box, my pick <laughs> for December was The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. What's cool is this doesn't officially come out until January, so you get it early if you're in Book of the Month Club. I am planning on reading this really soon. I'm looking forward to it. It's Rachel Hawkins' first adult novel, which is exciting. She's always written YA before, and I've liked what I've read from her. This one is a Southern Gothic retelling of the story of Jane Eyre, which I am totally here for, so I'm really looking forward to that one. And then I got two add-ons. First, in my quest to buy and read everything by Riley Sager, I picked up The Last Time I Lied, which I loved. You can hear me talk about it in my mid-month wrap-up, which I will link up above if you haven't seen it yet. I gave this one five stars. I have one more book in his backlist to get so I will probably grab that one in January Final Girls and read it then. And then lastly a book that I finally decided to grab because everybody seemed to be loving it and I can tell you it's amazing it totally lived up to the hype for me this might be the best YA debut I've read in 2020. This is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. It's a modern day kind of urban fantasy story set in the south that uses the Arthurian legends as part of the mythology behind the magic system and this secret society that's in here. But I would call this Cassandra Clare meets Octavia Butler because that's kind of what it reads like. It's so good though. Like if you don't like Cassandra Clare, still give this a try. But it's similar in that it's magic interacting with our real world. 
killing nasty demons, a secret underground magical group. There's like some crossover and similarities, but it's also similar to Octavia Butler's writing in terms of the bigger topics that are getting dealt with and the richness of the mythology and the world building and the character development. It's so good. Really, really good. Um, highly recommend. So I also picked up Legendborn. Oh, okay. So there you go. Those are all of the books that have come into my collection. <laughs> There's a lot of them in the last month. Um, yeah, from a variety of different reasons. Next month hopefully will be fewer, although I do know I'll probably get a few more books for Christmas that you'll see there and have a couple things coming from publishers, but hopefully it'll be a little bit toned down. We're gonna work on that. <laughs> in January. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know, is there something that you are kind of a sucker for when it comes to book buying or other kinds of purchases where like, if there's a keyword or something you see, you're like, oh, I really, really want that. Because seriously, illustrated short story collections and novellas, I'm just like things with beautiful artwork. I want them all. It's very hard. Uh, but I, I don't get all of them, but I do get some. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.